I've been in the market for a short throw projector for a long time now and thankfully Nexago has sent one over for us to take a look at and uh, it's available online now for 2600 US dollars. It's capable of throwing an 80 inch to 150 inch screen. I can't remember the size of the one that we have here. I think it's about 120 inches. We're gonna get it set up. We're gonna try some games. I've got a laptop too and hopefully this guy's coming with us to the Christmas party. Oh yeah. A little information book here. Foam. Here's our projector here. Looks like we've got a couple speakers along the back side that faces you on the couch. We've got four speakers in here. Each of them are about 15 watts. Two subs, two tweeters, that sort of thing. Got some inputs on the back here. We've got USB, HDMI 1 and 2. Number 2 supports Audio Arc, which is the audio return channel from your TV, if you want to have anything plugged into that. Both the HDMI support HDMI 2.0. And if you have other external sources like, uh, you know, music player, or you want to have an aux in, it's got three and a half mil in and out. Uh, at home, I use the projector as well. And I use the audio return channel to come back to my stereo at the front of the room. The nice thing about having a short throw projector like this is it's all self-contained right in where you want all your media stuff. So you don't have to run cables through the ceiling or around the sides of the walls like I do. It's great. And we've got a LAN port too. Ah, oh, and yeah, this is a laser projector, which is kind of exciting. They're uh, claiming about 25,000 hours on the laser emitter, which is kind of cool. What else we got in here? We got a power cable and a nice little remote too, which is cool. Cool thing about this is it has Android 9 built in, so you can uh, you know watch YouTube videos, Netflix, all that sort of stuff right from the projector itself. You don't even need a you know external device like a PS5 or laptop hooked up, which is great. And let's uh, throw this on this table here. You don't have to have it on like a coffee table like we've got here. You would have it on your center console and place it however far away from the screen. And it's got these little adjustment wheels on the back here so you can uh, adjust the feet up and down to get the picture centered up and down like that. It's a little bit easier than doing it in the ceiling, right? It looks like it's got a pretty big uh, aperture. I mean, you're doing a 150 foot screen is gonna be pretty huge. The laser in here will be 2500 ANSI lumens and it'll do 4K. 60 frames a second and it has 120 frames a second with that motion plus smoothing stuff we'll see how that looks it's probably okay i don't know so let's get it down on the table we'll get it powered on and calibrated and see how that goes it's quiet that's nice i guess because uh it doesn't have the giant fan in it like you would need a lot of cooling with a traditional like xenon discharge oh there we go it's on the ceiling okay <laughs> maybe ow maybe a bit uh bit too far away. Hey, there we go. So yeah, um, there's no zoom controls or anything. So you do have to find the place where it's going to live physically rather than anything else. And these feet should help. You know, we're going to get some keystone correction and we'll do that stuff in a minute. Okay, I think I've got it reasonably well positioned. One of the difficult things about a short throw projector is the height of the throw needs to be critical. The height of the bottom of the image is directly dictated by how high the projector is off of the ground. So depending on a few things, you might have to adjust your screen. We have a rolly screen, so why don't we just bring that up a bit and then we can pull this back until it fits. The more you can do moving the projector around physically rather than doing it in software, the better image you'll get out of uh, any kind of projector. Because, you know, the lens is going to distort whatever you have. I mean, naturally, you would probably put the projector in your house and then find the position of the screen. We already had a projector, so this screen is already set for our screen size. Okay, so this is settings for the whole thing. We go into display. There's our keystone correction. So it'll have eight-way keystone correction, which is uh, quite nice. And we can do four point or eight point. And so we can come in here physically and we should be able to just grab this and fix any of those little distortions that we might have. That's close enough for today. Let's have a look at the eight point. Oh, okay. So just add some more in the middle. There we go. That'll get rid of any of the pin cushioning that we can see there along the sides. That's, uh, that's always nice to have. The other thing that's nice to have is this um, focus correction. And you, so you don't have to like get down there and play with it. Press the arrow keys on the remote to adjust focus left and right. So we can get up nice and close. 
have a look at the pixels. What I'm looking for on the screen here is if I can see like the individual lines of the pixels. And it looks like the corners are a little bit soft, like here. It's really nice right there and over here. This is kind of a low resolution image. So if I take this over, no, that's okay, even more. I think that's fine. There you go. That's a little bit easier than having to drill into your walls to hang a projector, isn't it? What on earth is Aurora Cast? Is that like a, oh, it's like a special version of Chromecast. That's kind of nice. Yeah, it's got AirPlay for, you know, your iPhone and your, your Mac, Miracast for your Android devices, and Dulna for everything else. Let's get the PS5 on there and play some games. It's uh, picked up uh, 4K at 60 hertz, which is great. Oh yeah, that's right. So this is an HDR projector. Uh, I believe it supports HDR10. Let's have a look at some of our input choices because this has, uh, it's got the Motion Plus and all sorts of other things. So here we can adjust some image parameters. We've got our brightness, HDR is on, color temperature is standard. Oh yeah, that's right. It'll do 3D stuff too. So it looks like left, right, top, bottom, frame packing, frame sequential, all the cool stuff. Oh, it has a specific gaming mode. So we'll probably want that. In gaming mode, this one will do 30 milliseconds of latency, which is not too bad at all. A lot of projectors have a hell of a lot of input latency. I think there's quite a bit of image processing they got to do, especially got to go through all that digital keystone correction and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> ah, I'm standing over it. That's why. You're going to watch TV here, you dumbass. Okay. That's actually not bad. Those are pretty good. When you're actually pointing your head at the speakers, they sound better. Who'd have thunk? Let's, uh, let's take our image parameters over and we'll go to TV. It's about the same. We'll go over to game mode, movie, sorry, gaming mode. Oh yeah, that's like, that's definitely less and it, it doesn't feel as bad. And of course we don't know the, uh, the game's actual like choice to smooth uh, inputs. But yeah, that feels certainly faster. I mean, it's nice. It's bright. It's easy to set up. Do I go in my hole? No? Okay. Let's, uh, let's try a YouTube video. YouTube. Have you ever heard of YouTube? Never, never. Do we do a crab rave? Do I, do I dare? Definitely some sort of artifacting from the motion smoothing. Um, that's very strange. If I go back home and push the home button and then go to settings and go to display <laughs> and then man, let me go back. See if that artifacting is still like, there. Oh yeah, that totally is. I wonder if this is just the bit rate of the video. The thing is though, it says that the viewport frame is 1920 by 1080. So does that mean that the Android TV is only uh, you know, full HD, it's not UHD. So if we want to watch 4K UHD content, we need to plug in a laptop anyway. So this is 4K at 60 frames a second, which is great. I guess motion smoothing is disabled for 60 frames a second things, but I don't, I don't know. I think that's about all the things that I can test with this. Um, you know, from next ago for 2,600 bucks, I think if you care about having speakers that don't sound absolute garbage, uh, if you like having the Android integrated system, and if you want the nice kind of compact form factor that sits right up against your wall, like this is like half a foot away, it's great. Um, then this will be an awesome option for you. Um, check out the link in the description if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching, subscribe to Short Circuit.